So good morning once again, and thanks for being here at this 135th regular meeting of the Alpha Executive Board. As we gather to conduct the business of our union, I want to express my gratitude to your dedication in upholding our profession and your commitment to representing airline pilots across the U.S. and Canada. As Alpa's first vice president and national safety coordinator, I'd like to provide you with some updates since our last meeting in May. In particular, I want to reemphasize what J Jason just spoke at length about, our fight against reduced crew operations. Without dwelling, I'll add that this issue touches so much of what we are thinking about all the time. It's an existential threat to our core safety mission. And time after time, significant safety-related developments reinforce the importance of ALPA's continued vigilance and advocacy for aviation safety. The, national, the recent National Transportation Safety Board hearing regarding the January 5, 2024 Alaska Flight 1282 accident once again confirmed ALPA's expertise on safety. As a party to that hearing, ALPA's spokesperson was Captain Steve Jangelis, ALPA's ASO Aviation Safety Chair. He was assisted by Alaska MEC investigation team and staff from the Engineering and Air Safety Department. ALPA's questions to the witnesses shed light on the operational and human factors that were critical in ensuring the safe outcome of the incident as well as highlighting the importance of having two pilots on the flight deck during this event. In another significant development, the NTSB released its final report on the February 4, 2023 runway incursion incident in Austin involving FedEx Flight 1432 and Southwest Flight 708. The report revealed that a lack of critical safety technology and assumptions by an air traffic controller led to a near collision between the two aircraft. The NTSB emphasized the need for improved systems to alert both controllers and pilots to potential conflicts on the runway. During these discussions of the report at the NTSB board meeting, NTSB Chair Jennifer Homendy specifically recognized their critical role that the two FedEx pilots played to avert disaster that day. In June, I represented ALPA along with Captain John Gillis and members of our engineering and air safety staff at the FAA EASA International Aviation Safety Conference here in Washington, where more than 400 senior aviation professionals gathered to discuss critical global aviation safety issues. Co-hosted by the FAA in EASA, this annual conference brings together airline industry and aviation stakeholders from across the world to address safety challenges from both regulatory and industry perspectives. Later that month, I represented ALPA at the Latin American and Caribbean Air Transport Association's Aviation Safety Flight Ops and Training Summit in Lima, Peru. The summit provides the opportunity for aviation stakeholders to discuss and share best practices, address challenges, and develop strategies to enhance safety standards across Latin American and Caribbean regions. And I'm pleased to report that we received feedback that our message regarding reduced crew operations resonated with those in attendance. In addition to highlighting our message and opening the eyes of many at the conference, we gained valuable intel regarding EASA's thought processes, as well as the opinions of members of the FAA at levels below the FAA administrator. Our aviation security volunteers have been particularly active recently as they monitor the evolving challenges posed by the ongoing conflict in the Middle East resulting from the hostilities between Israel and Hamas. Unfortunately, the situation has escalated once again as regional actors have been drawn into the conflict. While some carriers resumed service in the region for a short period of time in recent months, no ALPA pilot group is currently flying to Tel Aviv due to the volatile situation. In the meantime, our security structure remains clearly vigilant closely monitoring developments. 
Another area of focus for security has been the TSA's implementation of the Ratback system, which provides recurrent criminal history vetting through records of arrest and prosecutions. While we recognize the importance of ensuring safety and security in our industry, ALPA continues to voice concerns about, to the TSA about how this system could potentially be misused by airline managements. Our priority is to ensure that RATBAC is implemented in a way that respects our members' rights and protects their privacy. We're working to ensure that the system does not lead to unintended consequences for pilots such as unfair treatment or inappropriate use of sensitive information. We'll continue to advocate for our rights and work towards solutions that maintain both security and fairness. Our pilot assistance volunteers have been doing outstanding work to support the well-being of pilots and their families. We recently hosted ALPA's Pilot Peer Symposium, which brought together over 60 attendees representing 11 pilot groups. The symposium focused on the critical issue of pilot mental health, a topic that continues to be a top priority for ALPA. Attendees had the opportunity to hear from expert speakers and panelists, including Dr. Susan Northrup, the FAA, FAA's federal air surgeon, who emphasized the importance of education, early intervention, and evolving standards in addressing mental health within the aviation community. There were also discussions during the symposium about ALPA's ongoing Are You in the Green campaign, an initiative designed to raise awareness about pilot mental health, which has received positive response since it was first launched in May. ALPA has been a leader in this area, notably co-chairing the FAA's Mental Health and Aviation Medical Clearances Aviation Rulemaking Committee earlier this year. Through initiatives like Are You in the Green and ongoing peer support programs, we're making sure that every pilot knows that they're not alone and that their union stands ready to support them. In Canada, ALPA Canada President Tim Perry and the ALPA team recently met with Transport Canada to discuss improving the delays with medical certification and offer ALPA's assistance. ALPA continues to press Transport Canada to maintain flight time, duty time regulations, including advocating against a request from one carrier to allow for seven continuous days of duty. ALPA is advocating as well for a formal consultation process that involves Transport Canada operators and ALPA, a process similar to the process which exists here in the U.S. Our ASO jump seat volunteers continue to make strides addressing jump seat policy issues and enhancing the resources about, uh, available to our members. One of the standout successes has been the flight finder feature within the ALPA app, which has made it significantly easier for pilots to locate flights. Since the launch of the service, flight finder searches have surpassed 7 million queries, a testament to its growing popularity and usefulness. And oh, by the way, that brings pilots to the app. In July alone, 292,220 searches were logged, setting a new monthly record and highlighting the in increasing demand for reliable, up-to-date jump seat information. This tool has proven to be a vital resource for our members, and we're proud of the continued success and development led by our dedicated jump seat volunteers. And as always, ALPA's Air Safety Organization continues to offer valuable training opportunities for members who are interested in volunteering their time and expertise. These opportunities span across all four pillars of the ASO structure, safety, security, jump seat, and pilot assistance. ALPA firmly believes that investing in the training and development of our members is not only an investment in our organization, but in the future of our profession. These training courses, held throughout the year, provide a means for members to become more engaged with ALPA and support the essential work carried out by ASO volunteers. As you can see, as the largest non-governmental safety organization in the world, ALPA's ASO has significant respect in our governments and the industry 
as is demonstrated by the high-level people we attract to our many events. Our processes work. ALPA's annual legislative summit took place here in Washington this past June, and some of you attended. And during that summit, I had the privilege to join more than 160 ALPA pilots representing 12 groups who gathered to advocate for our profession. That's 12 pilot groups. Pilots heard from conference presenters and panelists and participated in breakout sessions in preparation for their Capitol Hill visits. We completed more than 180 visits to congressional offices, meeting with lawmakers to share our perspective on issues that affect aviation safety, like reduced crew operations, as well as to thank them for their support for passage of FAA reauthorization. The legislative summit not only strengthens our relationships with policymakers, but also ensures that our voices will continue to be heard in the halls of Congress long into the future. Attendees were also trained as part of ALPA's District Advocate Program, which connects ALPA members with their representatives in Congress back in their home district. Of course, another way that ALPA builds relationships is with ALPA PAC, and as ALPA PAC's Political Action Committee Treasurer here in the U.S., I'm pleased to share with you that ALPA PAC continues to set new records and achieve growth. Over the past year, we've seen a significant increase in membership, more, with more than 15,750 individual donors in 2024. Alpha PAC has exceeded the total number of PAC donors in 2023 by more than 500 individual contributors. In forecasting our PAC receipts between now and the end of the election cycle, it's expected that Alpha PAC will exceed $5 million for the first time ever, more than doubling what we achieved just a decade ago. Our current split of 54, 46 and partisan support highlights the importance of maintaining bipartisan alliances, ensuring that we have strong advocates for ALPA-backed initiatives, regardless of political affiliation. While we applaud our successes, work remains. We're well behind our union siblings at NATCA, whose PAC last year raised $8 million with 16,000 eligible members. In comparison, our PAC raised $4.4 million with 64,000 eligible members. NATCA's PAC is nearly double the size with a quarter of the members, which is even more striking considering that air traffic controllers, many of whom their pay is less than ours. Our goal should be increase our ALPA PAC membership significantly. While the Banking 1931 level is an awesome new addition, and some members do even more contributing the $5,000 max to the PAC, we need to increase focus on participation as well as the levels. And the younger the pilot, the more critical it is. There's less that can be done to ruin the career of a pilot nearing retirement, but a lot that could harm the careers of pilots with lots of runway ahead. And our advocacy is not just limited to south of the border. Our advocacy in Canada is strong and growing. Our Canadian members have the benefit of had, having money out of politics, and our advocacy allows us to have a strong voice on Parliament Hill and ultimately across North America. In July, ALPA participated in e the EAA's air venture fly-in in Oshkosh. With approximately 686,000 people in attendance this year, this event provides a great opportunity to, to engage young people who are interested in aviation, encourage those who would like to pursue an airline career, and educate the public with, and others within the aviation community about ALPA and its mission. While in Oshkosh, I participated in a couple of interviews. We use this opportunity to convey ALPA's message about the importance of always having at least two pilots on the flight deck and the threat that reduced crew operations poses to aviation safety. We're diligently working to carry the message to everyone who has a stake in the airline industry, including the public. 
We want to make sure that ALPA's voice is heard and our message is impactful. And ALPA is not just reaching out to aspiring airline pilots at events like Oshkosh. We're also actively engaging with young people in other aspects of our industry. I recently had the opportunity to connect with graduate students here in D.C. when I, along with Anatka Lawyer and a person from A4A, sat on a panel at the Eno Center for Transportation's Leadership Development Conference in June. This conference gives students studying transportation policy a chance to advance their education and professional development through hands-on learning and direct access to industry leaders. I spoke with conference participants and shared my thoughts from an Alper perspective about the complexities of transportation policymaking and the challenges we're currently facing in the airline industry. It was extremely gratifying to talk to these young professionals who will someday engage in policymaking that will affect our industry and our profession. And before I go, I want to mention all the work that has gone into ALPA's 68th Annual Air Safety Forum, which starts today and concludes on Thursday. We've got a great program with excellent present presentations and speakers. We'll also recognize those who have demonstrated exceptionalism within our profession or outstanding leadership within our union. Each ASF is nearly a year in the making. ALPA staff and pilot volunteers have done extraordinary work to organize this forum, with staff putting in very, very long days. I'm looking forward to it coming to fruition. I hope that I'll see many of you who will be here during the forum and continue our discussions. I'm interested in hearing your thoughts, exchanging ideas, and working together on the initiatives that will continue to keep our skies safe and secure for the future of our profession and the generations of pilots yet to come. The work we do together is more than a responsibility. It's a privilege to help guide this union through a time of significant change and challenge in our industry. It is these moments that our unity and resolve matter most. And I'm proud to be part of a leadership team that is so deeply committed to ensuring the safety, security, and success of our members. I look forward to continuing this journey together, tackling the challenges ahead with the same determination and solidarity that has always defined ALBA.